Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and probably eight or nine years ago, I made a group of cats for a show, and it was that project, because I needed to get them done quickly, that was actually what pushed me to create my paper mache clay recipe. I needed a way to create those animal sculptures a whole lot faster than I could do with paper strips and paste. Now, in order to make those particular cats, a whole group of cats, I drew out a pattern on a huge piece of paper, because they were pretty big cats, and I put heavy wire all the way around the edges of that pattern, filled in the insides with crumpled paper and masking tape, and then I was able to move them and shape them into fairly dynamic um, postures. But I, but I never used that method again because it was a real pain in the neck. I started using the cardboard patterns on the inside of my animal sculptures, and that's what you know how to do if you read my book on how to make animal sculptures with paper mache clay. That kind of that book combined those two ideas: how to use a cardboard pattern and how to use the paper mache clay recipe. But lately, people have been asking me for a way to create a pattern that moves and bends and twists a little better than a cardboard pattern can do. So I started thinking about those cats again. Would I do it the same way? And the answer to that has to be no, because it, like I said, it was a real pain in the neck and the cardboard patterns are so much easier. But cardboard doesn't twist very well, so I had to think up something new. I've been thinking about this for really about a month and a half, trying to trying to get my mind around how I would do it now to create the same kind of dynamic, twisty, and movable armatures, but still have the simplicity of the cardboard pattern on the inside. And I think I finally made it. This is what I ended up with. This is actually a cougar pattern. I'm not going to put this pattern on my website because I'm not going to finish the cougar right now. I'm just using this as an idea for you guys, assuming that you will do this only if you're already familiar with using patterns on the inside of an animal sculpture, and, and if you're already used to the idea of creating your own pattern, because this is really an advanced way of doing it. If you haven't used patterns before, make sure that you either read the book or watch some of the videos on my YouTube channel that show you how to do it. But this is a, definitely an advanced way of doing it, and it does bend and stretch really cool. Now, the, the body is the only part that really twists. The legs don't. They do need to articulate. They've got to bend and, and move where the joints do, but they don't twist the way the body does. So I was able to use the cardboard again for the legs. Um, that gives me the outside shape of the legs, which is really helpful. I was able to use the cardboard for the head because skulls don't change their shape when an animal moves. But I wanted the entire body to be made out of crumpled aluminum foil because that can bend and twist. So I drew out a pattern with my cougar in the same size that I want my final sculpture to be. I didn't want the sketch to end up on the inside of my sculpture, so I put one piece of aluminum foil down over it and, and just used the pattern to shape that piece. Then I used some heavy 1 8 inch aluminum armature wire to make the spine and the tail, and, and I used hot glue to attach the spine to my uh, aluminum foil. Then I went ahead and added more crumpled aluminum foil so that it ended up being about 3 eighths of an inch thick. It's crumpled and squished really flat. Now I did make one mistake when I was putting the aluminum foil on the body pattern and that was that I added aluminum foil for the neck and I really shouldn't have done that and I took it off. The reason I didn't want to do that is because my cougar is going to be sitting on a rock kind of surveying his domain and I wanted his neck to come, be able to fold up, his, his head to come back down again. He's going to be looking out over a wide expanse, you know, like he would be up on a cliff or something. He's not going to want his head out flat the way it was in my sketch that I was using for the pattern. So I took that off. But once I had the body all done, it was time to start working on the legs. I, I did the legs over several times as well. But the final way that I did it is working really nice. I'm really happy with it. I used my glue stick to attach the pattern pieces to a piece of cardboard. And then I also used the pattern to shape the leg bones. But before I actually attached the leg bones to the pattern, I wanted to make sure that the the legs could bend really easily at 
the joints. I took the pattern piece off. I shaped the leg pieces, kind of rounding out an area uh, behind the knee in front of the elbow and all the way around on both the top and the bottom of the, uh, the heel and the uh, wrist. One curved line up at the shoulder and one straight line above it. I just want to make sure that the joints can bend and there won't be any cardboard in the way, but I still want all of the cardboard pieces on there to keep the, uh, the leg bones from twisting. After that, I put the cardboard pieces back on the pattern, just temporarily with the glue stick, so that they would hold still while I was uh, gluing the bones onto the legs. And then just to make sure that those bones stayed where they belonged and didn't, sometimes the hot glue will just kind of pop off if you're really um, kind of torturing a piece. Uh, I just used some of my Gorilla Tape, uh, just, just as a little added security. So then it was time to attach those leg patterns to the body. I got four pieces of about the same size of aluminum foil and crumpled them up into really lightly crumpled balls and attached those to the body piece with my hot glue. And as soon as that was firm enough so they didn't move around, I went ahead and attached the legs on top of those balls. So now we have the legs attached to the body piece, but they need to be squished a little bit. Cats, including cougars, have a really narrow rib cage, and so I'm going to squish this a lot and bring it really close together. And then I'm going to squish the hips too. Use your resource photos. Don't, don't do it just because I'm doing it. I don't even have a resource photo out here right now because I'm only showing you an idea. I'm not showing you how to make a cougar. So this, I can get away with it right now. But you want to use your photos if you're making a, an actual sculpture. So now we've got a cat, basically the inside of a cat. And he can twist. He can bend. But now we want to move the legs around in a way that kind of makes sense. Uh, Rex Wynn is making a dog sculpture that's on his back. This is not a dog, obviously. This is a cougar, but I'm going to use this anyway just to show you how that would be done. I'm going to twist the body because that's how a dog will do when he's playing on his back. He's going to go like that, kind of. And then his legs would probably splay out. I was going to do that by squishing on his hips. Maybe one of them will be bent inward. Maybe stretch his heel out so it's like this. Maybe he'd like to have his one of his legs up really straight. Okay, make it a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and put this one back. And we can do the same thing with his arms. Now clearly this is going to have to be padded in order to make sure that he actually will stand up but we've got a really good start on it. But my cougar doesn't really want to be playful. He's just not that kind of guy. He wants to be able to sit up on his rock and, and see what's going on down below him. So I'm going to get out something for him to sit on. He's still going to be twisted. In fact, he's going to be twisted just as much as if he was laying on his back because cougars like putting both of their legs out in, the, in one direction when they're laying on their rock but his chest wants to be up so that he can so he can look out and have his head up. He's going to be looking that way because no, eh, no. Let's have him look over here this way. Now I'm going to stretch his front leg out like this. And then this is his wrist. There's no foot on this pattern that I created because I've already got a post out on my website I'm showing you how to make a posable hand and toes work exactly the same way. And I'll put a link to that down below. So normally there would be a paw on the other end. I just didn't, I didn't add it to this video. I'm going to use my, there we go. I wanted his wrist to bend just a little bit better than it wanted to. I'm going to bend this guy up. Bend this one down. 
I think it's pretty obvious that you don't want to be totally relying on your pattern because cardboard, as we talked about before, it just doesn't change its shape. And it would need to right here, obviously, because we've got a muscle that's stretching and this cardboard doesn't want to. So we would actually have to cut that off. And you would be able to find out where to cut it because you're going to be looking at your reference photos. <laughs> right? You're going to do that. So now we've got a, a, an animal that's in a very different position than he was in the sketch. Where did my sketch go? In my sketch, he's just standing on all four legs. And now he's got a twisted spine. He's got one front leg stretched out really far. He's got his uh, back legs are both bent in different directions. And we can just keep on changing him any way we want to until we're satisfied with the way it looks. Now, of course, after we have the inside of the animal all shaped in the way we want him and he's doing what we want him to do, then we add more crumpled foil and hot glue, or you could use crumpled paper and masking tape like I do in the book, and you fill out all those forms using your reference photo so you know where those forms go. And you'd have a really nice sculpture with your animal doing anything you want him to do. So I think from now on, if I make an animal sculpture where it's really doing something dynamic, this is the way I'm going to do it. It's almost as easy as our regular cardboard pattern, but it stretches and twists in a way that the cardboard doesn't. Now I'm not going to put this pattern on, on my website because it's I'm not going to have time to actually finish it, and I don't want to just put the pattern out there and not show you how to actually finish the whole entire project. That wouldn't be quite fair. But if you are familiar already with making patterns of your own, and you're familiar with filling out all the forms before you add your paper mache or your paper mache clay or epoxy sculpt, whatever you're using, if you're familiar with all that, but you've been kind of wanting a way to make a more dynamic sculpture um, that maybe your cardboard patterns weren't letting you do, then I hope this helps. Give it a try. If you do try this idea, I do hope that you'll come over to the Daily Sculptors page on ultimatepapermache.com and show it off. And also, if you have some better ideas on how to make a dynamic uh, pattern for your sculptures, we want to hear those too, so put that down below in the comments section. We really want to kind of uh, get some ideas going here. So I do hope that helps. If you're watching this out on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification daily so that YouTube will actually tell you when the next video comes out. The next one I do hope will be a lion mask or actually I'm going to be using it as a wall sculpture. I've got his muzzle done. I'm really slow. <laughs> so it's going to be a couple weeks probably before that comes out. But watch for it. And in the meantime, come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.